the Sierra Nevada. So remote and rugged that it has withstood the urban growth machine of California. Within its peaks lie many popular backpacking trails and easy summits. And for those looking to push their boundaries past the walk-up summits, this mountain range, rising nearly 10,000 feet within just a few miles of the adjacent valley, also offers premier climbing and mountaineering. But when venturing off of the well-carved and crowded trails for a true climbing objective, climbers need to be prepared to test their self-reliance and wilderness skills in a new highly unforgiving arena. With the snowpack long gone, it was the time of year where I usually found myself doing scrambles. But there's only so many peaks that fall right in the sweet spot of being fun and easy without just being boring. And looking over all the potentials, everything just seemed too tame. And I realized I wanted to step it up and do something that I could actually consider a climb. Not a scramble, not an involved hike, but an actual climb. After finding an interested partner, we did some research and narrowed it down to what we thought was a perfect option. So I've been doing more research on this route and mostly focusing on trying to make sure we got the route finding down. Um, one other thing I'm finding though is the beta is saying that we can ditch the rope and um, it should be easy enough terrain. There's just one 5.2 crux at the bottom um, and we should be able to ditch the rope. The one thing I'm not liking that I'm finding is that the route finding is supposedly very difficult and more than a few people have found themselves in scenarios where they have taken the wrong way and then the only way down is going up because they don't have a rope and so then they push on through something really sketchy um, and i just don't like the idea of being stuck in that scenario so i think um, despite what everyone's saying we'll carry the extra rope just to make sure we have the insurance policy that we can get back down so i have an awful lot of stuff laid out for what is supposed to just be a climb um, essentially things have gotten pretty complicated because we are going to be leaving right after work on Friday, which means we're going to be sitting in a bunch of traffic, um, and we are then going to be spending the night somewhere on the 395, and then we need to get to the trailhead early the next morning to then hit this climb. So essentially what we're going to do is we've got separate stuff to sleep with, um, for Friday night. I'm going to leave that in the car. We'll then have our backpacking stuff totally packed with our summit bags attached to the backpacking stuff. So when we're waking up Saturday morning, we can hit the trailhead immediately without packing things. Um, and then we can just drop our bags and immediately just have our summit bags ready and we can hit this climb fast. I don't want to be fumbling with bags, switching items where you're in a parking lot at the trailhead and all of a sudden it's been an hour and a half and all you've done is moved around gear. So we're going to try and completely avoid all of that and be ready to go. And as planned, traffic and all, we hit the road the next day and we were off.
As we approached the trailhead and got our first glimpses of our route, we began to understand the true scale of what we were about to undertake. And as we were grabbing the last of our stuff in the parking lot, there was definitely a feeling of apprehension in the air. As we got our eyes onto the route for the first time close up, our anxiety was replaced by excitement. It looked totally doable and fun. Regardless, what we were in for was a small piece of canyoneering at the base of the climb where we had to look out for a right turn. Here we would encounter the first rated pieces of the climb. After that, the beta went dark and we had no idea if we'd be slab climbing or just be doing some easy scrambling. Then, we'd reach the red rock, which from pictures early online, definitely looked like it would be third class. The crux here was the route finding. It was imperative that you stayed en route, or else you would end up in unknown, high-rated slab climbing, which was something we wanted to avoid entirely. With proper route finding though, we would be able to remain on easy fifth class slab climbing. We would finish the climb on some very underwhelming scree for a total of 3,880 feet of climbing. Once done there, we'd make our way back along the ridge and look out for the crack chute to drop in on and hopefully have an easy scree slog back down to the base. Armed with all these assumptions, we headed off. The only reason this is sketch is because of the running shoe scenario. It's a lot better than my face climbing. I said this is definitely the right turn. So there's even a carn right here. This is definitely the right turn we're supposed to take. Pretty early in, we met that supposed Ooh, crux. Yeah, this foothold. No, I like this one. Okay. It's worrying me that you're having trouble with it. It's just one move. It's just one move. That's it. Uh, I just need to find.
Greg. How'd you just help out? Hip away, baby. <laughs> Hip away. <laughs> Once past the crux, we were hopeful that things would lighten up. And with what appeared to just be a few more sections up ahead, we were eager to see what was in store for us. However, when we emerged from the Slaw Canyon, we began to understand the type of exposure and climbing we'd be facing. While the climbing was easy, it was exposed enough to be fifth class. And with no protection anywhere, there was no way to set up a rappel and head back down. So the only way down was going up. Oh, that's what man is like. How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, I'm more like. Uh, that's gonna get annoying. You can just turn it off. Mine's off. Oh, okay. I only have it on when it's say, you know, if we really need it. Um. For me, it's more like I, uh, you know, at this point, like we got to get to the top, and um, I'm more worried about the heat. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like we got to make as much progress as we can now because it's just going to get hotter. Yeah. As much as it sucks to, uh, like kind of wear ourselves out. No, that's fine. I'm on board. Let's do it. That is such a good feeling. And once we realized we made it past the root finding crux, our nerves calmed down and we decided it was time to actually take a longer break and have some lunch. Yeah, I'm having fun. What's on the menu besides the banana? Oh, fudge. It's nice. everywhere. You got banana sauce, dude. You lucky dog. You get to have sauce on this trip? And you said you were talking to the car about how good fermented food was for you. That's true. Oh, winning. So gross. <laughs> Still wanting to make good time, we got back on route immediately and continued in the enjoyable third and fourth class terrain. However, our excitement turned out to be short lived. Because while the climbing in the red rocks was easy and enjoyable, once past it, we began to question if the crux of the climb was actually at the bottom. 
This was the section I had been worried about all week, and here it now was staring us right in the face. With no other options but to continue up, we pushed right on into it. filming you so make it look good that's not my specialty looks like we just made it above the slab climbs um, I definitely became a little bit of a wimp um, that was crazy uh, rope would have been nice uh, you know it, it was easy climbing but just couldn't get it out of my head that you know if I fell, it would not be good. So I kind of wish we roped up for that, but we're above it. I've been kind of worried about that section all week. So I'm excited to just finish this out and it looks like we're going to get to the top. Um, I mean, going down is not an option, so we better get to the top. So when people get off route, I'm pretty sure this is the terrible thing that they get off route on. F that. Once off of the slabs, we emerged upon the talus, and for the first time in my life, I was actually excited to do a scree slog. But within just a few minutes of having the hillside disintegrate under every single footstep, we immediately just wanted to get to the summit.
after being extremely humbled, I did remember that there was another easier way up. And even though the views were spectacular, it was late in the day and it was time to head down. Thank you for taking the time to watch. These films take an incredible amount of energy and effort to make, and filming on site as we do these hikes adds an extreme amount of complexity. Sometimes it feels like I'm hiking some of these two times instead of just once. So if you've enjoyed watching, I ask that you subscribe, like, comment, and a huge help would be to share since the YouTube algorithm does not help out brand new channels right now, sharing to any other platform that you use would be a huge help.